In this video, we are going to go over additional commands that you can execute using PHP to interact with your database. So just like with our select statements and our insert statements, we can update data in our database using an update query. We just replace the values that we're going to provide with question marks. So here the quantity will be a question mark and the order ID will be a question mark, which will then be provided from the variables that may be previously defined, such as quantity and order ID. So this first variable would then substitute for this first question mark. This second variable would then substitute for this second question mark. Data can also be deleted from our database just using the same delete command, just using a delete command as we've been taught. So we would then just substitute this question mark with whatever we need to. So in this case, we're going to delete from the customer table where the customer ID is equal to whatever was previously defined. Any query that we have learned how to execute against the database can theoretically be used with PHP. For example, we could create tables, we could create procedures and functions. It just doesn't make sense to execute those since that's more of a one-time thing. Another command that is very useful is the command of last insert ID. What this is going to do is look at the connection, see what was just inserted into the database. It's going to then grab the primary key value of that last inserted record. It will then store that last inserted value inside of a variable called insert ID in this case. So let's look at an example. If I wanted to insert a new customer named Creighton University, I would say insert into customer the name and the values with a question mark. So this question mark, we are going to substitute the name, as you can see, with this execute statement. So this name is basically going to be substituted for that question mark to insert this new record. We then look at the connection uh, and get the last inserted ID. So this would get the ID of whatever Creighton University's new ID would be. We'll store that in the customer ID variable. Then let's say we wanted to insert an order as well associated with this customer. We would prepare our statement by saying insert into order and any columns that we need. In this case, we need order date and customer ID. So the order date is going to be now and the customer ID is going to be a question mark, which is supplied from the customer ID we generated up here through the execute statement. So this customer ID will then be passed into this question mark so now we have associated Creighton University with this specific order that has been inserted. Another useful command that I highly encourage you to be careful about is to bypass using prepare and execute and just using query. Now the only reason why you would ever use query rather than prepare and execute is if you are running a query that does not involve user interaction at all. So, in other words, those that do not have positional placeholders or question marks with inside the query. So in this case, this query is just selecting the customer ID and name from the customer table, no interaction from the user, therefore we can just say connection query. This is, is essentially like running the prepare and execute statements in a single command. Then it would loop through and grab the customer ID and the name associated with those. So let's go ahead and look at an example of using the query that we previously described and the last insert ID. So this first thing that we're going to do is execute a query with that query command. And this is just going to give me the skill ID description from the skill table and the order by description. So what we're going to do from this query is we're going to loop through. We will get each one of the options that are available. We will display the description and then pass the skill ID when the form is actually submitted. So this is going to populate all the drop-down values that are associated with this drop-down. Then we will check to see if the form has been submitted below. Grab the first name, last name, and skill. We will then insert our first query, insert it into the database based on what was provided below, which is the first name and last name. This will then say that the first name and the last name and employee was successfully added. We may want to check first to see if this employee already exists, but for the sake of space on this slide, I removed that code. The next thing we're going to do is grab the last inserted ID. So this is going to grab the ID of the employee that was just barely inserted into the database. We'll store it into an employee variable, and then we will insert into the employee skill table the employee ID from up above and the skill ID that was picked from this drop down menu. So now we are associating that skill with that particular employee. So to show you what this looks like, let's copy from the notes pane and put this inside of the page called employee skill insert.php.
So here we are at our file directory. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and we'll call it employee skill insert.php. I'll go ahead and edit this page. We'll paste the code inside of here so we can see that we have a drop down menu for first name and last name. This skill is going to populate all the possible skills, which comes from our query that we've generated up here. Again, this is going to use that query syntax to get the skill ID and description. And then we're going to have the description displayed, but the skill ID passed. Uh, just to show you again from a previous lecture video, that if I actually look at the skills, we will see the value is different than what is actually displayed to the user. And then after they submit it, it's going to grab all the values from the form. In this particular page, unlike what I had in the slide, I actually do some checking to make sure that the employee doesn't already exist. If the employee exists, I will then grab the employee ID of the existing employee. Otherwise, I will insert the employee and then grab the last inserted ID for that employee. Then whether or not I had the employee ID from here or the employee ID from whatever existed, I will check to see if that employee skill already exists. If it does, then I will say that it already exists. Otherwise, I will insert that new skill for that employee into the database. So we'll go ahead and type in Billy Blue Jay, and we think he's pretty handy with the 10 inch table saw, so we'll click Submit. So as we see here, the employee Billy Blue Jay already exists, so it didn't insert Billy Blue Jay. But it did say successfully inserted the skill ID of six for the employee Billy Blue Jay. If I did the same query again by submitting the same values, we would see that it says that Billy Blue Jay already has that skill.